G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and in this video I'm going to show you what happened when I used fish frames as fertilizer and added some baby worms to grow a ton of big tomatoes in this container. We're going to remove this old plant and dig down to see what we will find. Let's get into it. Now before we remove the plant, and of course before that we'll remove the remainder of those ripening tomatoes, it's the end of the season. It's just naturally died back. I do want to explain the setup for this experiment. First of all, we went fishing. First drop, 56 centimetre snap. That's what I'm talking about. Hell yeah. Hey? Oh. Anyway, we caught a number of fish and instead of turning them into a fish stock I thought let's put them in a container and see if we can use them as real fertilizer for a tomato plant throughout its whole season. So I've got a pretty large container and I got some old potting mix. Now this is a little bit of a controversial part because some of you are going to say Mark you've compromised the experiment by using potting mix that has fertilizer in it. But the problem is, if you just put in normal potting mix with nothing, well, it might take a while for that tomato plant to send its roots down, and it might run out of energy before it reaches that fertilizer hit. In other words, the potting mix I used was old and probably not that great, but had enough nutrients in it to allow that tomato plant to grow down and then get that big fertilizer hit that I was hoping for. I filled the pot up about a quarter full and then I placed the fish nice and neatly all around the bottom. So then I filled the pot all the way up and then I planted the seedling tomato in the top. I got the seedling tomato from the nursery. It was a new variety that I hadn't seen before or tried. It's called Gladiator, which is close to my heart. And I planted that into the middle of the container. I made a tight teepee type trellis for the tomato to grow up out of bamboo. I then added some baby worms that are also purchased from the nursery. They come in a little packet. And the reason for adding the worms in my mind was the hope that they would migrate down, start processing those fish frames and make the nutrients more accessible to the tomato plant. So essentially the worms were to help break down those fish frames. And if anything else, I'm interested probably more in what happened to those worms and did they survive? Did they get enough feed or indeed did they process those fish frames? We'll see very soon. Over several months, I watched the tomato plant grow I trained it up the trellis and it was all going pretty well. And then I did notice that it had a bit of leaf curl on it. Some diseases can cause leaf curl, some type of stresses can cause leaf curl, and also over fertilizing can cause leaf curl. As the plant kept growing and still producing fruit, I started thinking more that it might have been the tomato roots reaching those fish frames and getting either too much of a nitrogen hit or perhaps even suffering some stress because of wet roots caused by the decaying fish frames. Regardless, I just continued on watering as you would a container plant that is in a fairly hot climate. I'd water it every second day, sometimes it was extra hot, I'd water it daily. And I should also point out that in that first week, I'd notice a bit of a smell, not anything overly pungent or strong or awful, just a slight smell as I walked past the plant that, yes, it was a, bit, a kind of a bit fishy. But anyway, after about seven or eight days, that smell went away and that was that. Over the course of about several months, the plant produced very well. It produced beautiful, big and plentiful tomatoes and they were very nice tasting too. For those who are interested in the tomato itself, the Gladiator tomato is a hybrid. So it's a cross between two tomatoes. And if you were to grow the seed from one of these tomatoes, it probably wouldn't be true to type. It might revert back to one or the other. I don't usually grow hybrids because you can't then regrow the seed. However, I've got nothing ethically or ideologically against it. And I actually really enjoyed the tomato itself. 
the tomato was about the same sweetness as a standard Roma, so really good for sauces. But I was happy to still eat it fresh in salads and also on toasties, which was my toasty test, and it passed that with flying colors. So for a tomato variety, I think it's pretty good. All right, enough of talking about the setup and the growth. Let's now dig down and see what happened. All right, I'll remove these tomatoes first. That one's no good. We got a, quite a bit of life out of this plant. Had a good long season. Pull this out. Now, what I don't want to do is pull the whole root system out just yet. So I'll cut that off. Here we go. Cut that off there. Put that there for now. Get rid of some of these weeds. Oh, I just found a worm on top. Here we go already. We've got worms. Okay, let's uh, take this mulch out first. Oh, look at all the worms. Now I've got to be very careful because I want to put these back into the garden or into the garden, not even back. They're everywhere. You can start seeing the root system now. We should start to see the fish frame soon, I think. Let's pull that up. There you go. There's the root ball. Okay, I think we're starting to get to fish bones. See those, they're, they're little hair feeder roots all through the fish. There we go. There's the good fish bones here with worms inside it. There's doesn't seem to be much flesh or anything. There's certainly no smell at all. That is very interesting. There's little worms everywhere. Hey! all the feeder roots went through the whole pot and through all the frames this is incredible there's hardly anything left not even bones a few big bones but look at the worms inside of them one two three everywhere it's just a big pile of worms and pretty much nothing else just a few skerricks of skeleton so i'm not going to waste this mix i'm going to put it into this garden bed here and we'll enrich the bed with all these worms and this beautiful fertile mix And for those of you who are disgusted with me using just my bare hands and no gloves, well, the reason I do that is because I love the feeling of the earth. And to me, a bit of fish frames here and there and some dirt, it doesn't concern me much, I just love it. You're not living until you get a handful of dirt without gloves. Whoops. 
cover that over, some mulch, and this is going to help this bed 100% to be able to grow big and better crops for the next season. Well, I have to say, and I hope you agree, that this experiment to grow a tomato plant on fish frames in a container like this has been an outstanding success with worms. Don't forget the worm part, because that helped the whole process. I'm really wrapped at how basically the fish frames completely disappeared in a reasonably short amount of time and what was absorbed and used by the plant to create wonderful fruit that we're preserving and eating you know there you go this could be done anywhere you know i really am happy with how this experiment worked out anyway if you're happy and you enjoyed this video make sure you give it a big fish frames thumbs up and share the video around because that helps my channel out heaps and also if you haven't subscribed make sure you subscribe to my channel thanks a lot for watching bye for now